So we are going to take a look uh, on, on it in a short while. All right, so time for us to dive into a demo around the in-memory OLTP. Okay, so let me just bring up my slide. Okay, I think it's it's visible to all of you, right? So this is a virtual machine uh, that I've created, and uh, there is an instance of SQL Server 2014 that is installed. Right now, just to give you um, give you an idea about the about the background as to what we are going to do, right? I have a AdventureBooks 2014 database. All right. Now, if I expand this database, I just have one disk-based table called Sales Order Detail. All right. Uh, you just need to pay a little bit of attention on this because you know if 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 you miss out on any of the points, I think uh, it it might get a little difficult for you to understand or to follow through, right? So kind of just bear with me. Um, so this sales order detail table is populated with about two million records, right? So uh, uh, and and uh, as I said, this is the only table that exists within this database, right? Now let me pull up a quick script over here. Right. Now, uh, as I said, uh, when you when you want to kind of uh, have some of your tables, uh, you know. Or migrated from traditional disk-based tables to in-memory tables. Right? There is something uh, that you need to do as a prerequisite. First thing is you need to add a particular file group that would be holding the metadata for your for your uh, uh, memory optimized data. Right? So if you see, uh, I have I, I just have this database and I just have one disk-based table over here. And now that I want to create some in-memory tables in this database, I'll have to add a file group. It could be any name that you may want to give, right? And you should say it contains memory optimized data, right? So you, I'll go ahead and add this. All right. Next, uh, I will say all to database, database name. I'll have to add a file to this particular file group to be able to hold all that data. So I'm going to add a file. You can see the part defined and to the file group which we just created, which is the memory file group, right? In the previous step. So I'm going to create this file as well. Great. Now next, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to define an in-memory uh, table. Okay. So if you see the syntax, I'm going to create a table and I'll give all the column names and I'll give a primary key non-clustered hash index with a definite bucket count, right? And I'll save with memory optimized on and durability equal to schema and data, right? I'm going to execute this. Okay, so if I refresh, I have two tables now, one disk-based table and one memory optimized table. In the next step, I'm going to create another in-memory table, okay, which is a copy of the, uh, of the, of the first in-memory table that we created. So the schema is same, right. Next, what I'm going to do is, refresh this. So I have a memory source and a memory table. Next what I'm doing is I'm populating my sales order detail memory source table from the sales order detail table, right, which was the first table that we already had in the database and I'm going to populate all my data into my uh, memory optimized table.
right? So this will populate all my data from my sales order detail table into my sales order detail memory source table. Since we are dealing with a lot of records, this might take a little while. Okay, it's executed perfectly fine. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a procedure, a natively compiled suit procedure. Okay, so create procedure. I'm not going to, uh, since we are running out of time, I'm not going to discuss a lot about the syntax, but just to give you, uh, you know, a, a few things to note in the syntax is that you need to mention with native compilation and begin atomic with transaction isolation level equal to snapshot and link language equal to English, right? So some of these things are mandatory. So I'm going to create this natively compiled stored procedure and execute. Now you need to make sure uh, or you need to understand that since this is a natively compiled stored procedure, it can only operate on memory optimized tables. So if you see the definition of this stored procedure or what this stored procedure does, is that it deletes from the sales order detail memory table and it then inserts the data into the same table from the sales order memory source table right so it's it's kind of a resource intensive uh, or transaction intensive stored procedure i should say next i'm going to create another disk based table right which is a replica of uh, my uh, sales order detail table. So if I, again, if I were to give you the entire background, we have two memory optimized tables and two disk based tables, right? And uh, one of the disk based tables is empty, and this one has two million records, and uh, sales order detail underscore memory is again empty, and memory source again has two million records, which we populated from sales order detail table, right? Next, uh, I'm going to create a regular stored procedure, right, uh, which would be operating only on my disk-based tables. Nothing fancy about this. It's, it's a normal stored procedure. Again, it is deleting from one of the disk-based tables and again repopulating it from the second disk-based table. Right. Now, uh, as you see, since we have created three objects as in memory OLTP, right? Uh, two of these tables and uh, another one for my uh, natively compiled stored procedure. So if I, I can go ahead and check the DLL information about all the objects that are there in this database. So these are the three DLLs, right? And uh, this is where they, have, they are actually stored, okay? So you can use these sysdmos loaded modules, uh, you know, DMB to kind of go about querying the data about, I should say querying the metadata about your in-memory objects. Right, so now once you're done with this, uh, I think we are pretty much done and let's see like how do we test the performance benefit, right? So I'll open up another script. So what I'm doing over here is, uh, I'm going to run the uh, these stored procedures that we created, right? One of these stored procedure is for the disk-based tables. It only operates on the disk-based tables, and another one is the uh, is for the memory optimized tables, right? As in uh, the natively compiled stored stored procedure. So we are dealing with the same amount of data, right? It is just that it differentiates with the kind of tables they are, right? So this stored procedure is kind of again deleting data from one of the disk tables and repopulating it from another table which is again disk based table and in this particular transaction or in this particular stored procedure we are just dealing with memory optimized tables and they are again doing the same thing right so i'll go ahead and execute this and i have put it in an explicit transaction right so just to make sure and just to show you like what is the kind of locks that are held right uh, when when we are when we are uh, executing uh, you know or when we are dealing with these tables so i say begin tran 
and I execute the selectable destination disk table. So what this will do is that it will delete all the records from the sales order uh, detail table and then repopulate it from the other table. So these are the two tables that we are dealing with right now with this restore procedure. Right? So, okay. so it took almost 22 seconds on the bottom right corner you can see the amount of time it took. Right? And uh, since this transaction is still open because this was an explicit transaction so we have not yet committed or rolled it back. So if I see the kind of logs that are held on these tables you can see that there are exclusive logs taken. Right, because these are traditional disk-based tables. So to ensure that we are transactionally consistent, it has to hold these exclusive locks. Right. So I'll go ahead and commit this for now. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm again going to execute another procedure, which is my natively compiled stored procedure, and this would only work on my memory optimized table. Right. So you can see that this just completed in a span of two seconds, right? So the same amount of data, same kind of transactions took 22 seconds to complete, right? Now, uh, just to let you know, this is a lab machine. Uh, there, there is no intensive workload going on. Hence, you do not see a lot of transaction times, right? But typically, if you test these things in a in a production environment, or uh, if you if you check the performance in a production environment. These, this is this is a serious impact that that you can make on your response times for your queries, right? So it just took two seconds to complete, and if I check the logs, because as I said, I executed this again as a part of an explicit transaction. So if I check the logs over here, you can see that there are shared logs taken, but there are no exclusive logs taken in this case. Right, so it's a uh, it's pretty much a lock and a latch free environment that we are working on right now. If we if we are operating upon the memory optimized tables, all right. Great. So uh, this is the kind of performance improvement that you can expect when you work with memory optimized tables. Now, as I said, there is an AMR tool as well. So I, I don't think so we have sufficient amount of time left, but I'll quickly run you through uh, you know what it is all about. So your AMR tool basically uses the, uh, the data collector mechanism which has been there uh, since previous versions of SQL Server, right? So all you need to do is you need to go to data collection, go to tasks, and you need to configure a management data warehouse, right? Uh, I already have a database created on my server. If not, you can go ahead and create a new database server. Oh, sorry, a new database and uh, assign the right permissions. Hit next and say finish. So this configures the data, the management data warehouse. Again, I need to configure the data collection. So basically, uh, for those of you who do not have an idea about data collection, what it does is it kind of extracts the uh, the usage and the performance analysis on on a particular server and stores all that information into a database that that is MDW in this particular case, right? You can also configure data collection sets remotely, right? It is just that you need to use a SQL Server agent proxy for remote uploads. So. Uh, in 2014, you also see an option for transaction performance collection. So you need to check both of these options. Hit next, connect to the server, and say finish. So this, what it does is it basically goes ahead and it creates certain data collection jobs which execute every 15 seconds and they upload the the metadata about your queries, about your stored procedures, about your tables, what is their usage, all of that analysis is stored into numbers into the data warehouse database. Right? So if you see there are certain jobs that get created as a part of collection and upload. Right? 
Now, how do you how do you go about analyzing it? Uh, right click on the data on the management data warehouse or whatever database that you uploaded all that information. Uh, go to reports, management data warehouse reports, and click on transaction performance analysis overview. Right? It gives you table analysis. It gives you stored procedure analysis. So, what is the usage analysis? Right. So, if you see uh, significant migration work, so this basically tells you how much amount of migration work you need to carry out to be able to. Uh, migrate a particular database object to in memory uh, or to a memory optimized table right and what is the kind of performance gain that you might get so that is kind of reflected on the y axis and on the x axis it, it it kind of shows you the amount of work that needs to be done so uh, logically anything that falls into this particular quadrant right is kind of uh, eligible or the most eligible candidate for an in memory oltp Similarly, uh, based this was on the usage analysis. Based on the contention, it again offers you certain details. Now, uh, it does not give you a lot of information on my server because uh, this is just a lab machine. I do not have some intensive workloads running on. But uh, if you kind of create these uh, or configure this uh, management data warehouse at your end, right? Uh, this data collection at your end on your production server you will definitely and allow it to run for some time you will definitely see some results out here right which are the potential candidates also for the stored procedure analysis it again gives you the details which are eligible right so i was just testing out with some queries and test one is the is the most eligible candidate to be able to convert it into a readably compiled stored procedure uh, also uh, in addition to this it offers you uh, you know the capability to do it so all you need to do is you need to go to that respective table which is suggested by the transaction performance analysis overview or by this data collection tool by the MR tool you know, let's say if it was sales order detail what you need to do is right click on that table and go to memory optimization advisor once you click on that it opens up a wizard right and it shows you like what are the potential issues right if you if at all you want to move this table to a memory optimized table right now as you can see there are certain failures right or certain things which are not supported as a result it shows uh, a red cross right so i need to take care of each of these red crosses uh, to be able to kind of move this table to an in memory oltp table now uh, before this, let me move back to this deck. Sorry. Uh, so there are certain limitations and restrictions as well with the in-memory OLTP. So there are certain data types which are not supported by memory optimized tables as of now. Uh, just to name a few of them are like uh, uh, text, varchar max, uh, user-defined data types, XML, image and text so these are certain data types which are not supported also there are certain database features which are not supported like let's say database mirroring is not supported uh, for these tables uh, then dbcc check db dbcc check table all of these commands don't work right triggers are not supported identity columns are not supported so there are certain uh, certain limitations and restrictions as of now but uh, uh, definitely the product teams are working on this and uh, <clears throat> you will see that uh, these limitations and restrictions are taken off in in the future with uh, future releases of SQL all right so uh, with that I'm more or less done uh, on 